Wechamar, Shri Area Crossup. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the latest episodes of Walking the Crossroads. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the concept of gender and how it plays into the various books of Oak Cross. And also why I, as a gender-fluid individual, have tended to uh, be confused and until recently decided to finally start writing something that expresses who I am. So before we begin, I'm just going to define a few things. If I say the word intersex, it refers to people who tend to be more than um, one gender. Uh, so effectively, if people, the old term hermaphrodite, which by the way is incredibly offensive, I'm just going to say that now. Um... If you want to say a little bit less, and I'm trying to dance around this term, uh, in between is another example, but that's not exactly who they are. And I'm just saying this because this is an example of something that is often overlooked. So when people say that there's only two anatomical genders, that's incorrect. There are There's also intersex individuals. So from the get-go, humanity is not a binary species. And I want to also say that if people are going to start citing things in uh, when it comes to the um, the comments, I want to let you all know that there are actual animals out there that will have more than one male gender or female gender or have neuter gender. So when we start talking about anatomical aspects, I want to say that that is not exactly applicable to humanity, especially when we are such a complicated species. Now, traditional American society often, I believe, is recognized, I'm going to say probably about four genders. A lot of people, particular in more conservative circles would say two, man and woman, which is kind of sad because the original German word for human is man, so it's kind of redundant. But anyway, let's move forward. So one of the things I'm going to describe here is identity, how the person uh, identifies with their gender. This is especially important to people who are transgender, who feel that they are one gender but were not born in the right body. Um, if you are dealing with someone who is, or you're encountering, or you're friends with someone and you're not so sure about that, if they are a male to female, female to male, or uh, I would say whatever um, direction, how they identify, if you're unsure about the pronouns, uh, some people get a little iffy if you ask them about pronouns. If, if they identify as a woman, just call them she. You don't have to worry. Bruce Jenner is now a she. Just go with that. I'm saying that because a lot of people, and I'm being kind of blunt about this, is because a lot of people who are not used to dealing with transgendered individuals or transgen, um, they seem to act like it's some kind of major problem that they can't understand. I'm just going to say, don't complicate things more than necessary. The next part is expression. This can also, and I'm going to probably use transgender people as an example here because it's the most visible thing I can think of at the moment. Um, actually, let's use, uh, I'm going to describe gender fluid. There's quite a few people who can dress and pull off androgynous looks. They can also look very feminine. They can look very masculine. By the way, those words are very, very misleading when you really think about it. But anyway, a lot of this is because in the context of what we're talking about here is identity is how someone identifies, how they feel. Expression is how they decide to express themselves, show themselves, Right. I identify as gender fluid, yet I express mostly as masculine. I do this, actually, I express entirely as masculine at the moment, because at the moment, in real life, I'm fine with who I am. Plus, I don't have the money or the time or the doctor access to be where I want to be. So I'm kind of stuck with the situation until a lot of other things change. But at the moment, I'm also happy, whereas my internet expression tends to be very different. I don't like referring to myself as male or female. I tend to be more androgynous. If people call me male or female, I really don't care. I'm sin. That's me. That's my internet identity. That's how I feel at that time and moment. That's how I express. So, a lot of people. So, this is where I would say the, the system gets kind of complicated because people often try to put the concept of expression and identity into a box. And that doesn't work, especially with humans. I mean, there's a society in Malaysia, I believe, that has five genders, people. So it, it's really not as simple as you like to put it. And humans are far from simple because we're humans. I mean, if we were simple, we wouldn't have 7,000 languages or 7 different thousand ways of looking at the world and communicating that. So let's go on to how this deals particularly with... Um, 
I would say for my writing. Now, I want to I want to kind of allocate here that I'm not trying to get on with the Tumblr crowd or Reddit, but I think it's very important as someone who's undergone these problems to kind of speak up just on the fact of expanding diversity, telling more stories. So, let's kind of I'm going to talk a little bit about the Fey. As everybody's kind of noticed, the Fey are again, you know, they're not human, so they tend to apply a different set of rules to themselves. Part of this is also gender identity. The Fey have, gen I would say, in general, five genders. Fluid, intersex, androgynous. And I use the word androgynous because I really don't like the word neuter. Because neuter, to me, implies, like, lacking anything. Androgynous, to me, is kind of, like, neuter, but it can still be, like, it's not, like, a lack. Which neuter tends to me to mean means, like, object. And that's not. So I tend to go with the word androgynous. If someone wants to pitch me a better word, again, co comment. Love it. Awesome. Um... The, there they have fluid androgynous male female intersex they have five genders and in a way this plays into their five linguistic genders of animacy fire water time i mean spirit fate and what was the other one um i think it is time it might be time is it um i can't believe i forgot this i invented the language anyway the different uh, way how things are seen played into how they perceive things. They kind of see things in fives or threes. And the Fae, because they have magic, they can have individuals who are, for 100 years, are female. For 100 years, are male. Who change their genders to how they feel. Who have no gender. Who are both genders. Who are multiple different genders. And this is not even including the landscape of the humanity where we have people not only on Tumblr, you know, inventing terms to apply to themselves or who are discovering terms. We have people who are now sharing information about different societies and they're starting to find things that more apply to them. So I want to say again, it's complicated. It's not going to be that simple. And even as I say anything, I'm, it, I'm not going to at all probably even begin to scratch the surface on this. Um, I'm not even going to cover the whole thing in roleplay where some people actually get iffy about people roleplaying other genders. That's a thing. I think it's silly. If you have a suggestion on that or a com again, comments, people. So, let's talk about, I would say, one of my more obvious characters that are um, that's in this topic. Let's talk about Nyla Clarkson, or as her real name is, Quinn Tamsin. Nyla is a female gender queer expression of myself. I did this on purpose because I wanted to kind of express who I felt as an individual. Nyla is me, but at the same time is not me. Um, Nyla is genderqueer in the fact that, one, I will say this because people are probably going to ask, Nyla's bisexual, I'm, homo I, I'm not homosexual, a lot of people ask me that question, I'm not bisexual, I am heterosexual, I'm not even going to go into that. But Nyla is bisexual. I'm clarifying this because it's going to probably get kind of... There's always been that one person who asks the one weird, awkward question. The sexuality of an individual has nothing to do with their gender identity. I just want to state that because for some reason there's still people out there who think that because you want to be a woman you must be gay. I don't under really get the logic. I mean, it's stupid logic, but that's still a thing. So... Nyla, when she dresses, she tends to dress, I would say, I, I really honestly say that when I write and describe how she dresses, I honestly tend to go for kind of the mixture of gothic, punk, macho, and I think she does that because, you know, one, she had a grandfather like mine who was in World War II, and she's got a refurbished, you know, Indian chief motorcycle, so why wouldn't you go for the full motif? That and she looks good in leather, so she does the full on there same time you know she still dresses fairly feminine and and this is kind of in the books right now because she is half fey she hasn't gotten the full power that she has and who she is is not fully described as of yet but we're getting there and part of that will include explaining why she's called the thrice bound but nyla deals with her gender identity a lot of the time because people ask her you know why do you like wearing booty shorts if you walk around dressed as a guy why is half your head shaved it is because Nyla at the moment does not feel comfortable being set. Her gender identity, like mine, is controlled by her emotions and how she is feeling. Some people might say that Nyla is unhinged, and that's kind of insulting, but at the same time, it makes a little sense, I guess, in a strange, weird way. But 
a lot of how this deals with when it comes to Nyla is that she's supposed to represent on how, I mean, particularly because she's half Native American, how Native American cultures had a lot less of this kind of set, you know, male, female specificity, heteronormativity that we tend to see here in a lot of conservative circles or in some other, other parts of the world. And I did this because I wanted people to really kind of understand how people like me or others feel. And I'm new to this. I'm completely new to the gender fluid thing. I was worried. I was. I thought I was transgender for many years. I'm still wondering about it. But right now, this is just how I feel. And Nyla, I think that kind of awkwardness is one thing that needs to be seen. I mean, we need to understand this is not you know, cut and dry. This is not the guy gets turned into the girl gender bender story we see in anime or a lot of other places. So it's something that needed to be covered, in my opinion. Um, now, when it comes to the fan general, the reason why I, I created them as being kind of iffy on gender is because, one, I wanted to see more heroes that not only were transgender, but were not set into the binary. You know, they went a step beyond traditional third gender. They weren't just... The Katoy Lady Boys, and by the way, offensive term, but I'm just using it as an example. Um, they were more than that. I mean, I had a character in one of our original role plays with these fey creatures that didn't even remember who they were, but they would change their their look and their appearance. They were basically a chameleon character, and I did this because I wanted people to explain the kind of problems and the kind of anguish these people feel, and it's something that I mean, we're now starting to see it with stories like Ancillary Justice come out. But it's still something that needs to be pushed. I mean, the fact that we are just now, you know, getting superheroes that are women, you know, with Carol Danvers down the line and Black Panther down the line as major superheroes and not secondary characters kind of shows us that stories need to be told that need to kind of open up this possibility of awesomeness that we can get just by telling more opportunities of story. Now, oh, I want to quickly mention that Mirror Empire, a good example of how to traditionally deconstruct gender tropes and move with it. But at the same time, Mirror Empire is kind of just a little bit of a reverse, but at the same time is not. Just going to mention that, though, if people want to kind of jump into that and get kind of a, a, a crash course in the concept of gender re role reversal, but more than just girls act like guys and guys act like girls, Mirror Empire, great example. A lot of this also played into how the Amazons work. When I was developing the Amazon Nation, I think I mentioned this before, but I really thought about how a society with warrior women would really work. And this is not, you know, again, a reversal of the genders. It is taking this concept of how Indo-European slash Turkish concepts of masculinity and femininity tend to be explored. And the one thing we learned is that step people were really freaking open-minded to this. We have history of women warriors. And that made me really think about how do we define a gender role based upon, you know, what you can do. And instead of doing it based upon, you know, they cook and clean and raising children, I went with the raising children on concept and I invented gender superiority because women can undergo childbirth. And we went from there and we expanded the concept. With the Fae, we went with the idea that, you know, they have this concept of the original linguistic genders and how that actually eventually plays into something. You know, if we have a fate gender, how... Uh, that describes, you know, destiny or something like that, could that possibly play into something? We have fire and ice, and in the storyline of Altir, fire was male and ice was female. That's why ice tends to deal with nations and living things and bodies of water. It deals with fe what the Fae consider feminine. Me a male, the male gender tends to deal with physical features and landscapes and mountains and that sort of thing. And that actually plays into how they see things especially with like the spiritual and it kind of shows you that in the fame mind concept they 